Hello again everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at SQL functions. SQL functions allow you to do some really creative things when you're querying your database and Oracle has a lot of them. Oracle has a lot of different SQL functions that you can use. This video we're not going to take a look at all of the different SQL functions out there. We're going to take a look at the five most common ones that you'll use on a regular basis. And We'll have other videos that look at uh, some of the other ones that are out there. So the five that we're going to take a look at today are sum, average, min, max, and count. Just by looking at them, you should be able to figure out what each one of these do. These, this returns the sum of a numeric field, whoops, numeric field. This returns the average, this returns the min, this returns the maximum value, and the count returns the number of records. That satisfies a certain criteria. You can use these by themselves, but they really become powerful when you use them with another clause called a group by. And a group by allows you to group together a whole bunch of different records that you're going to return and then place these values on top of them. So you might want to see uh, the average of a certain criteria inside your database. You can group together by that criteria and then see the average for each one of those different values. We'll take a look at those coming up here. So let's hop into SQL Developer. And we've been working with my music table here in my HR schema and my sample database. And let's say I wanted to see what the average rating was for all of the different values in my music collection. Real simple query to do that. What would we say? We'd say select the average of rating from HR music. Real simple, right? Execute that guy. Oracle comes back. Spelled from wrong. Let's do that again. And you can see there's the average rating, 7.3. If I wanted to see the max value, I have a couple of CDs out there that have a 10 rating, so this will come back with a 10. If I want to see minimum, I have that one CD out there with a 1 value. Let's hop back into music. You can see that it ignores the null. It doesn't know what to do with null because null is nothing. It's not zero. So it doesn't figure into the average, the min, the max. It just doesn't exist. So whenever we do those types of things, it just ignores any of the null values that are out there. So if I want to group by this information, if I want to group some of this information together, I can also use those commands. So let's say I want to group and I want to see the average rating that's grouped together by artist. So what can I say here? I can say select my average rating. If I leave it like this, it'll do everybody. But maybe I want to group by my last name. So artist underscore last name. So this will show you the rating values. I probably want to show the artist last name also in my query. So I'm going to add it to the beginning here. I'm going to say artist last name average rating for music. So what is this query going to do? It's going to group all of the artists together based on their last name, come up with an average rating, and then display it for me. So let's execute that guy and see what comes back. So you can see it grouped all of the Beatles together, grouped the Lennon uh, CDs together, the McCartney CDs together, the Morrison, Pink Floyd, and Lou Reed CDs. There was only one of them, so it just basically returned that value. But you can see that it grouped Lennon together with an average rating of 6. Does that make sense? We go back here and we see that I got one album that has a rating of 8, another rating, another album with a rating of 4, the average of those is 6. The average of the Beatles comes out to a 10, right? Again, null isn't counted for anything. The McCartney ones, we got a, a 9 and a 4, so the average of that is 6.5. That's exactly what it comes back with. We can also get the min and max values. So let's see what the min rating is, and I'm going to include title along here. And what's going to happen when I put these together? I get an error message, right? 
If I group together by the artist name, I can't display the individual titles. There's no way I can do that. So as, if I put in something here that isn't a group by function, I don't have the ability to go in there and do that. Now if I group by artist name and title, it's the same thing as just displaying the information by itself. So it doesn't make any sense to have this column in here. I can't do that. But I can see what the minimum rating is for each one of my different artists that are out there. So the minimum rating for Lennon is a 4, right? Because I have those two albums. One has a rating of 4, the other one has a rating of 8. Same thing for Paul McCartney. One has a rating of 9, one has a rating of 4. The minimum value that's going to come back is 4. I can also get a count to see how many of how many albums I have by each one of the artists based on their last name. And again, I'm going to group them together by last name. So if I execute that command, I have three Beatle albums, two for McCartney, two for Lennon, one for Morrison, Pink Floyd, and Lou Reed, right? All makes sense. There's my three Beatle albums, there's the two McCartneys, there's the two Lennons, one for Van Morrison, one for Pink Floyd, one for Lou Reed. Brings back all the information for me. So this gives you a basic overview of some of the SQL functions that are out there. There's a lot of SQL functions. We're going to take a look at some of the more advanced ones in some more videos, but this should give you an indication of how you can use the SQL functions along with the group by clause to do some really creative things with your SQL development.